drink it without going ouchie. Cold cold. <laughs> Hey, hey, Facebook. Happy Monday and so happy hot. last happy Monday. Show. Happy Monday. 2019. Look, we're all three here. I know. What? What is this witchcraft? All three of us here again. <laughs> is we, it, we use the force. We around did. here we go. Oh, no spoilers. I've seen I, it twice, though. I haven't seen it at all. I don't know. Oh, I, I've, so I finally good. thought. My wife didn't like the ending, but I, I loved it. <laughs> don't spoil it for me. I, I liked it, though. All right, good for you. I probably but, won't see it for another two weeks. I it twice, and Matt Parrish had he blew my mind with a thought he had about the movie. All right, when I was running, he talked with uh, Hughes. Yeah, Brad. Yeah, and yeah. The, the I had yeah, I to know. contact Brad and ask him a Star Wars question, and I was happy to say that I was right. So <laughs> I had a debate with my boss, and I won. So. Real quick, where's your question? I need to know because I'll be thinking about I, the whole show. No problem. I didn't win anything. I should have bet him. That was my mistake, by the way. That was totally my bad. Uh, <laughs> so um, it was, is it, Mike, is it AT, AT or at at? It's at at. Correct. That is correct answer. Yeah. Yes. The but he thought it was, Imperial Walkers. He thought it was AT, AT. And I'm like, no, what a <laughs> <it didn't work." laughs> I know. People say that there's other ones, there's other things like that that people. He yelled at me. Correctly, once like, pronounced. You have a Disney podcast. You should know it's not at at. You should know it's at at. And I'm like, no, no it's, it's at, an at, at at. And so, like, we had this debate. Like, we and then we walked around the office and we asked people who we thought were big Star Wars fans. And go figure, <laughs> none of them were big Star Wars fans. Even the big boss who like really loves Star Wars and he didn't know what they were called. And I'm like, what? You don't know what they're called? And so, yeah. So anyway. Uh, apparently, according to Lucasfilm, I did the research as well. According to Lucasfilm, it is at at. So you have your answer now. That's the official way of saying it. I'm just saying Lucasfilm says it's at at. So. It's been at at since yeah, the since 70s. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, he yelled at yeah, 80 something, 80 whatever. He told me it should be 1818. I'm like, no, it's no, not. I remember the kids I babysat. So, um, it was one of those families where like the girls got certain toys and the boys got certain toys and the boys of course got all these cool star Wars toys, which are, could probably be, you know, financing this kid's first Correct. house at exactly. this point. Yeah. <laughs> like no joke. He had every single toy. The little girl, by the way, got like a knitting set. Oh, oh, no, totally it, this is exactly how this family was. But anyways, oh, no. all the way up to the mom, like oh, she was no. probably, you know, so anyways, but anyways, they had every toy known to me and including the at, at, I oh, will say, gosh. I know it was pretty <laughs> impressive too. <sighs> that's awesome you should so. tell him you know hey we'll uh we'll meet at the atat -AT and go to back a lot explore oh my gosh so i was happy that i got to prove my boss wrong and i totally should have bet him think something and i did not that's my bad <laughs> but, but ryan brings up a great point though because that the was his is called an ATAT. i know that was, that that was the boss point that was this is always the argument oh, that comes right. out. now you totally blew my mind again my mind's been blown about star wars twice in two days <laughs> that was his point that it was my, my boss was like but one team. does not have to influence the other it i'm doesn't. just gonna say if yes. you snap off two legs on an ad ad does it automatically become an atsc <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> <laughs> that's only totally ryan to screwed up my whole night because now i'm gonna be Look like what i have oh dude is that a white wonder it's a chocolate frog. Oh my god! Oh, dude, I thought it? it was a wayf I thought it was a Sith wayfinder. No, did you open it? What's your um, What's your card? The cards. Yeah. Well, so this was the one that came with three cards. Oh, you had three yeah. three cards? No, four actually. The heads oh. of each house and oh. Dumbledore. So five, five cards. I can That's almost awesome. count today. I didn't know that they had those. Uh, three no. cards. <laughs> I'm still mad that I did not get to Universal to get my uh, hot butter beer. Maybe they'll still um, have it. I didn't get my hot butter beer, but we did the Christmas tree trail. It at the at Universal. Yeah, Universal. Yeah, I know it's not called the Christmas tree yeah, trail, but the hunt. Yes. And I got my free ornaments, by the way. That's awesome. The Re. That's awesome. It's not like one of those things at Disney where you have to buy a ten dollar thing to get. get. <laughs> Dude, the so not gonna lie, the Disney one that they have right now is really chintzy because the Christmas tree, uh, like the 
Chip and Dale one, you pay all that money and you get a paper ornament. What is that? That is not cool. Like it's a paper <laughs> ornament and you paid six dollars to do the hunt. Oh, almost seven. Seven dollars to do the hunt. I, so, got a, I got a more tragic story than that. I bought that when I was down in September. I bought my Skyliner ornament. Yeah. I never, it's a million. Pieces. Oh, yeah. you know what you got to buy? They have plastic. They have plastic like models. Buy one of those and then just use it. Because the I've heard oh. more. you're oh. like not the only person I've heard that from. This yeah, last I mean, it's like it's like powder. It's not even like recognizable. It's like gold powder. Like so, you can't even tell the animals. Or so it's it, mm. it was like the actual Skyliner crash. Uh, no, I mean, it disintegrated. Like it's like, it's, it's like a Palpatine oh. took it like. I mean, oh we God, saw that, that the, cra the crash rem remnants of the last of one. All the no, you could tell, tell it was at one point. No, you could tell at one point it was a bucket, and this one you couldn't. <laughs> this one, you oh my God, it's gold powder. I could sprinkle this on a cracker. Oh, no, it's glass. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back. Why are you sprinkling gold powder on a cracker? Probably because I just had because like, it's today's been bowl games all day long, and like I've all been working. I've been eating. Paige got me my Hickory Farms like summer sausage cheese mustard thing. Oh my gosh, well, Steve asked me I've if there was still Hickory Farms. <laughs> he asked like if it still existed or yeah, he, he was like, house. does Hickory Farms still exist? And I'm oh, like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. They do, but they only what? have kiosks in the mall. Yeah, yes. get them in the mall, and they're half price now because Christmas is over, and they're going yes. out and they're closing them all so up. You go to your local mall; they probably have a little kiosk in the middle of the mall. Mm -hmm. Like you know, our mall does not have a Hickory Farms kiosk. Do do mall attack you. No, no, I'm telling you 100. Ours does not have one. Not the word I use, by the way, I use a different word, but the mall attackers, uh, they um, they will come after you, and uh, they're in the middle of the mall, like the mall attackers. So we yeah. do not oh, have Hickory either. Farms. Those people are horrible at that mall in Orlando across yeah. the outlet. Yeah. I almost got in a fight there when Scott and I went there last marathon because I had just run a marathon. I was tired. I was cranky. I was hungry. And they wanted to try to sell me a carnival cruise. I, got, fight. I, I got literally attacked. Like they actually drug me over to their booth, not in Disney, but actually I think it was here in Atlanta. And they drug me to their booth and they made me sit down and they did my hair. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want. That. And they like literally would not let me get up. No, that's yeah. not okay. No, I don't like things not, like that. That's not okay. No, I oh I felt uh, I felt attacked. There's a different word that I use for it, <laughs> and not in Disney speak. <laughs> But so apparently, uh, Eric was the person who saw cats. I'm oh, good for you. Oh, oh, Eric, oh, it was you. Cat. You and, saw it. And Nina says that uh, we should wear the beauty mask while we do the show. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I feel refreshed. I'm going to do another one because they're on sale. They're closed out today at Target. Paid, or Mallory bought four more. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. There's a, I have a sloth, uh, another couple of penguins, and I think but she had another one. That was, was like a... Um, panda or something oh my gosh yeah, watch awesome. watch this space tonight that's fantastic okay, we gotta do some shit. brian keeps yeah. you shouldn't do them all the time you should like give, give your skin a day it a actually break. really good because it was cold and i had a really bad headache last night it actually made it, <laughs> it was awesome and she yeah. got the like roller that you roll you get cold and you roll on your forehead oh, that's boy. weird um eric my husband wants to see cats for some weird reason as well and no. i'm not entirely no. Sure. brian no <laughs> Yeah, I think it's more mostly out of morbid curiosity than anything else. But, dude, after reading some of those reviews, I'm like, what? And, uh, and, yeah, what? What? Yeah. He's it's, Eric was held hostage apparently and had to go. Got see it. Him. Got Aww. it. Just blink three times if you need us to get you out of the movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Oh my god. Okay. Let's do it. Eighty four. We should do this, and this should be the show. I know, this should totally this should, I, I heard <laughs> that we should do a show like this. This is going to be like us talking about the stuff that we actually talk about. This is going to go up on YouTube, by the way, so everybody can actually see it there, but still. It's, mm. yeah. Oh, Eric, I agree. It's nightmare fuel, all right. I saw the trailer. It's exactly the words I used. I'm like, good Lord. Yes. Uh, skin tight, skin tight uh, cat suits. Yes. No, Stephanie, Mike knock it off. Want me to talk about Rise. Mike no. won't let us talk about it. I'm writing it next we'll week. We'll have to wait until after Mike comes back. Yeah. Then we'll have a discussion. We'll show it for everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> it is good. Here's well, when we get on, I'll tell you. There's one thing I I will say for people. This isn't a spoiler. All right. But things that people want to know. Something that people want to know. Yeah. And I'll yeah. explain how I got my how I got on because yes. That is a question people have. It's not a question about the ride. It's how I got on the ride. So, yeah. All right. Nightmare fuel. Okay, here we go. Hashtag nightmare fuel. <laughs> I love it. Truly. Ordering questions. Okay. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, so this what is, is going for, on downstairs? This is Sorry. for New Year's Day, by the way. First show. This this show will be we'll we'll have podcasted in three different decades. The zeros, the teens, and this will be the twenties. I'm worried. Week? Like, are are we gonna eventually get like a little note in the mail that's like. I'm sorry, but we want to know your birth dates. <laughs> How old are you people? I always, I always love telling you. You need to like, stop. You need to stop. <laughs> I always tell Mallory, "How many of you? How many of your friends? You think their parents do podcasts?" <laughs> Dude, okay, so I have, have twelve thousand followers. My coworker, I because I posted that article, and he like we talked in his office. He's like, "Dude, that's really impressive." <laughs> I was there, there was cereal and like Joe Rogan. I know. He's like that was really impressive. He's got a he's got a YouTube channel that he's actually doing pretty well on, and so like he was super impressed that like we were in that article. Like, were you like boom? Yes, I, I was. We got to talk about that when we're actually recording the show. Yeah, because it is cool. It's very cool. Right, I'm, I'm not bring it up because I got other stuff. So much to go. So much to talk right. about. Okay, okay. we got to do this. Okay, let's be here. Um, okay. Mm what was that no, sorry i was trying to figure out what the noise was and then i figured it out it was me it was the realization of me figuring out what the noise was in my house wow <laughs> oh yeah maggie got the running buddy yes that's a good little thing i use mine every morning no kidding i had two of them my ones tore up they sent me a new one when i did the ads that's the greatest we thing we'll be podcasting and rocking <clears throat> chairs from right. the nursing home absolutely 100 percent for real because there'll be like fifty eight thousand satellites up there you know what yeah that's when rick will get really good internet yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's either jeff bezos or uh, or, uh, or uh i think it's been better no it has i just no. had to tease you about it good. it's not the refrigerator anymore so. it's no it's not shut off by the refrigerator no, it's not we have to do that show, Nina. So we got a lot of shows in the can. They're going to be good kind of around. That's a good topic. Okay, here we go. We got to do this. We're doing, got to do questions. We're getting Come on. backed up here. We're getting backed up like you ate a hickory sausage. Uh, <laughs> no. Wait. <laughs> no. No. Oh, Brian's got an all meat diet and it's killing me <laughs> right now. No. I had, it's no, so good. That, mustard, that mustard in those little boxes is like crack. It's so good. The little, Brian is legit so eating meat right now. Meat, cheese, and eggs, and it's killing me. <laughs> that's That's like a dream right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pasta last night. Okay, here we go. Who cares? All right, I'm carb loading. I'm going to Disney in like eight days. <laughs> Not running for like ten. <laughs> okay, here we go. Best. What so number good. is this? Eighty-four. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome to episode one thousand five hundred eighty-four of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel. Once again, happy new year to you. It is New Year's Day 2020. And as we were talking in the pre-show, we have now podcasted in three different decades. We started back in 2008, finished out that decade. Then we had the uh, the teens. Yeah. We went strong through the teens and now we're into the, the 20s. This is crazy. <laughs> I know we, somebody said in the live chat here that we are going to be uh, podcasting. Eric said we're going to be podcasting from the old folks home soon. Couldn't be more true. That'll probably happen. I love podcasting. love talking with you guys three times a week. So let's answer your listener questions. Joining me today, we have the entire crew here, and we're going to do it all year, I'm sure. Every every show. It's going to happen here in 2020. It's my New Year's resolution. We have Ricky from a Disney World After All.com, touringplans.com, and the mouse for less and freshly returned from Christmas at Walt Disney World. What's up, Ricky? Happy, hey, New, Year. Happy New Year. And for those who missed it, um, our podcast was actually named by Medium as one of the top podcasts of the decade. Boom. What is this? Mic drop. Yes, it is. That's awesome. So um, I was completely floored when Mike sent the text of, hey, we made this magazine's list. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I know all about Medium because I listen to a bunch of tech podcasts and that's where a lot of folks uh, go over and post their articles. Yes. So I thought that was so awesome that we were included as one of the best podcasts of the decade, along with like crazy real celebrities. Like, look at us. <laughs> we beat out <laughs> real celebrities. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that made well, me laugh. Plus, I told my I told my wife like we're on a list with cereal. I mean that's yes. how right there. I mean, come on. Yes, I I'm on a list with that's Adam crazy. Scott. You know, from Parks and Rec. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Adam, call me. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> 
I messed up. Anyway, so uh, yeah, it, that, that was pretty cool. But I wanted to talk because everybody's been asking me the question of how I got on Rise of the Resistance. Because no spoilers. I, I'm so promise, cool. I will not spoil, except for that one thing, Mike. No, I'm no. just Knock it off. <laughs> such a jerk. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, yes, I did not plan on writing Rise of the Resistance. I know I told you guys that before I left for my trip because I was not getting up at five o'clock in the morning. And while Brian and I briefly, briefly debated actually getting up at five o'clock in the morning and being at the parks uh, by seven, uh, that did not happen. Uh, we enjoyed our sleep that morning, and so we did get up a little bit earlier than we normally would on a Disney vacation. So uh, we got up at our normal time for work, uh, and uh, we made it into the park by 9 o'clock. Now, all of the actual, like boarding passes for the day had been distributed. So we got one of the backup boarding passes. And actually, we got one of the very last backup boarding passes for the day. So when I looked at my number and it said 190, I was like, ha, that's not happening because they had never gotten to 190 at that point before. So I was like, well, we're out of luck. I, you know, we'll keep our eye on it and everything like that. And it's fine. Well, we went to the Riviera to explore a little bit. We went to Caribbean Beach, hung out at both of those resorts pretty much the rest of the day. And uh, as I was go going through the app, I kept watching the throughout the day and I was like, this is this is going pretty fast today like these boarding passes are really really buzzing through and um so i you know it got to be about one o'clock and they were already like through all the regular boarding passes for that day and i'm sitting here going to brian i said they're in the hundreds we actually could make it on today and uh so at 7 15 i got the notification uh to head over that our boarding pass was actually up the park closed at nine so that is how i ended up getting on a rise of the resistance so i got lucky i got one of the last boarding passes of the day and i got in so that was it i yeah. did have a listener send me a message a dm on twitter saying ricky just has to suck it up and get up early and <laughs> i did not i got up at my normal time for work so <laughs> it wasn't like me sucking it up and uh i you know it was sucking it up as far as vacation is concerned but not uh not a five o'clock thing so now granted while the holidays are here and well they're over now as of today but uh with all the crowds for the holidays you know of course that kind of threw yeah that out of whack but Hopefully the the um, backup boarding passes will still be available throughout like a little bit later in the day, not five o'clock in the morning anymore. So that's good. Yeah. Ah, can't wait. All right. Thanks. All for joining us. We have the co-owner of the Magic for Less Travel, Pam Forrester. Happy 2020, Pam. Happy 2020, my folks. <laughs> so, yes. And I will say that we rode Roger the Resistance as well when we were down there. Um, you know, they have changed this, the boarding procedure for those who do not know, you do not need to be there super early anymore. I would say about 45 minutes before the park opens. Maybe if you really want to be in the first group, we got there, um, between 6.15 and 6.30 for a seven o'clock opening. Um, you can no longer get a boarding pass as soon as you enter the parks you have to wait until the official park opening time that's when they open the boarding pass groups and my other bit of advice for you is to get off the disney wi-fi and yeah. use your own wi-fi if you Dang. have it because that will help you so anyways um and the other thing to note is that everyone in your party who wants to ride has to be through the turnstiles before you can get a boarding pass that includes them so mm -hmm. keep all those things in mind I've seen um, those. It's absolutely worth all the hype. Um, while we were down, we did um, Hagrid's and also um, Rise of the Resistance. Both great rides, but I'm going to give the nod to Rise of the Resistance. Yes, that is the correct answer. I do yeah. agree with you. No, I agree. I no, Hagrid's, is a, Hagrid's is a roller coaster and Rise of the Resistance is a sort of an, an experience. Yes, so. because I felt really bad there was this little girl that we were like in line with and I could see she was crying. Like she was bawling tears and you could tell she was super nervous about it because the ride is so realistic. Like the whole experience is stop, so realistic. You stop. I know. That's not, that's not, telling, like, you, that's you not a spoiler. Spoiler. You, I know it's not a spoiler, but Ricky, you say things that come out of your mouth. You don't realize it. No, like, that's not a spoiler. I know, but you're about to. Just no, I'm not. Stop. What I was going to say is so I close. was on the same ride vehicle as this little girl and she was actually like, about to throw up like that's how realistic this was to her so i'm just saying like 
that's I agree with Pam in the sense of like it, it is two totally different. It is. It yeah. is. But the other thing I will say is for those who have motion sickness issues, and this is always my concern when a new attraction is released, because a thrill ride, an out and out thrill ride, not a problem for me. Mm -hmm. Something that could cause a motion sickness issue becomes an issue for yep. me. Um, and to the point where it could not be worth doing because I feel horrible the rest of the day. But anyways, um, this, I did not experience anything after this. So not a thing. So for those of you who have motion sickness issues, I think this is just not something that you have to worry about. I actually did smugglers run and rise of the resistance within, um, I think 15 minutes of each other. That's how perfectly our past the sort of worked out. So, and all good. But love them both. Still love the area. I'm still, there are still things I'm discovering about the area. We ate at Docking Bay um, 7 again. You know, just lots of good stuff going on at Disney. If you aren't, you know, if you don't have a trip in the works, get one there. Just saying. Oh, cannot wait. Mike Bankhead is in the chat. So congratulations to his Tigers. I couldn't have yes. taken the other night if it was one of my schools. I would have had a heart attack. I couldn't have stood it. And it, my wife still needs to know what time they got there because they're the first ones in the parking lot. They're the only time in the parking lot. They park closer than the head coaches park, I guarantee you. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's get to the, the questions. Actually, first, I have a quick uh, Carnax and put up to my phone, up to my head. It, the, uh, the thing on my, in the envelope, the virtual envelope says to infinity and beyond. Oh, man. To infinity and beyond. Where we wish we could send Mike. <laughs> yeah, right. How long is the line for Rise of the Resistance? <laughs> uh, nice. Nicely. All right. Done. Let's get to the questions. Now that I went there, I got to go here. And first question is from Mike. Hey, BOGP squad, my family of four, including an eight-year-old and a seven-year-old, have booked an eight-night stay at the end of February at Caribbean Beach. We used to be a value resort only family, but now we now that we've been several times, we're starting to invest more time into our resort stay and not so much time in the parks. From looking at the resort map, this place looks huge. I was curious if you guys have any recommendations for our stay. How is getting around the resort? We're planning on renting a double stroller, even though the kids can walk. It's worth every dime when they get cranky. Also a bonus question. We'll be at Walt Disney World during the Princess Half Marathon. How will travel be during this time? We're planning on hitting Hollywood Studios early on Sunday for extra morning hours. That's also the day of the half. Uh, my son loves Star Wars, and we're going to get there super early to get on Rise of the Resist to get a Rise of the Resistance boarding pass. How will our travel be with the marathon that day as well? We have the Skyliner at our resort, but I doubt it'll be running early enough for us to rope drop. Thanks for your help. You guys are the best. Much love. Mike from the frozen tundra that is currently called Massachusetts. <laughs> Good name too, Mike. All right. So uh, Pam, speak because you've been to Caribbean Beach here uh, quite recently. So and Riviera, kind of the same campus. You just returned from there. We'll talk about it that. Is. So okay. talk to him because Caribbean Beach is big, but give him some tips for uh, getting around with his uh, eight and seven year olds. It is. So if you have um, a location request that you would like to uh, go ahead and put that in. I really like Aruba and Jamaica. They're right across from the main sort of area there. And... The good thing is that you're also within walking distance of Riviera too when you're there. Mm -hmm. So go ahead if you want to and put that request in if you'd like. Honestly, now though, I think all of them have pluses and minuses in terms of their location. Um, you know, the pirate rooms are sort of located, you know, a ways off, but they have they have added a new quick service location that's very close to that location with the spyglass so they have a counter service location at the main center town area there which is also where the table service restaurant is that's shutters and then they also have another quick service location um, located in the area that's near those further out buildings so think about that i think the great thing about caribbean beaches it's really transports you to that location you get there and you feel like you're on vacation the music the palm trees it is the first moderate so that foliage is a lush mm -hmm. yeah. my friends and it has one of the best pools i think on disney property when you add in the whole pirate um theme and then the kids area the kids splash area is really cool too so i think caribbean beach is a great choice and you've sort of made the transition i think that a lot of people find themselves making they're spending a little bit more time at the resort and that becomes a little more important to them and a little less time in the park and you know what it's okay 
with fast pass you still get to your favorite attractions and you might even get to relax on vacation so go and enjoy let me ask you this ricky so with the skyliner if you're at mm -hmm. art of animation pop century riviera caribbean beach how early are they running that to the studios for the folks that are solely focused on getting there early for a boarding pass for rise oh gosh I I... Like five in the morning from pop at one point i don't know if that's still going on I don't know if it is either. And I was obviously just visiting um, Caribbean Beach a lot. And I saw the signs up for the Skyliner because I rode that a lot over the past weekend. And um, ah, gosh, something tells me that it wasn't running until like 730, if I remember right, which is after park opening right now. So yeah, I don't think it's running. And I think that's the, the time I saw was 730. So you're probably going to have to take, you know, uh, different transportation to get there, either Disney bus or, um, you know, a, if you want to get there even faster, you know, an Uber or a minivan or something like that. So. I'm going to probably take a taxi just because they're always sitting there just right. for that one morning or Uber, but whatever's there. Yeah. And okay, so about his question about um, Sunday going to the studios again. So the half marathon will be going on on Sunday. That's the longest race. Princess, I think, still uses the same. Um, they haven't put out the official because they changed the marathon course, but they didn't change. I don't think the half. So it'll go from Epcot's parking lot to the Magic Kingdom and back. So I think at the studios, you'll be fine getting there on Princess Half Morning, I'm guessing. Also, to answer Maggie's question, yes, there are still hammocks at Caribbean Beach because I was just sitting in one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're there. Yes. Ricky does the hard uh, work. So you yeah, don't absolutely. hundred percent. All right. Next question. It says urgent. The trip is on January 5th, 2020. So we're just getting this one in. It's a fantastic fast pass question. I've been listening to your show for the past eight months in preparation for my trip. One five through one fourteen of 20. I've done all the planning with our booking with booking our fast passes 60 days in advance. I got all my ADRs. It occurred to me today that we have a fast pass for Fantasmic. And since that show doesn't start till night, well, the fact that I have that pass mess up being able to get other fast passes in the park that day, my other two were done by noon. Should I keep the fa phantasmic fast pass? I don't want to be stuck having to line up or hold seats for two hours. I know you're going for marathon weekend. Good luck if I see you in the parks. I'm going to say hi. All right, Jane, we'll hope to see you there and do say hi if you can. So this is kind of like a philosophy question. Yes, if you have the phantasmic fast pass, you're not going to get the rolling fast passes that day because mm -hmm. you can't use it till your third one's up. Your third one won't be up till the day's over. What is your philosophy on that, Ricky? What would you do? Because, I mean, it's going to be January 5th or the 14th. The crowds won't be terrible. It's not like it is now. But no. Marathon weekend. Yeah. I mean, I would personally give up the fast pass and try to make a second, you know, try to make a second fast pass for something else. And then uh, that way I can use the rolling fast pass later that day. Um, I just think that that's a better option overall. I never make fast passes for the nighttime uh, experiences unless I'm not getting into the park until like evening. So if it's like the first day or something like that, um, I always make sure that I make my fast passes for early on in the day and then, and then use them up and then use the rolling fast pass. As far as seeing Fantasmic, um, I don't, you don't have to get there two hours early. Um, you know, maybe 45 minutes or so I think would be decent enough time to get there for Fantasmic. The other option you could look into is to see if there are any phantasmic dinner packages that are available. Um, that's always an option, a good option. Um, you know, uh, I know you have ADRs, but um, it depends on where you have an ADR for that may be available for a phantasmic dining package option for that day. So um, that might be something to consider. I like doing Mama Melrose and Fantasmic. Yeah. Like, it's a good yeah. combo. Mm -hmm. Pasta and a show is what yeah. I call it. No, but the good news is, though, I mean, this is something you might not have thought of, is that if you're going on one of those four nights where the races are happening, so the nights before, so Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, or Saturday night for Fantasmic, I don't know when or Fast Pass falls, those runners will be out of the park by the time Fantasmic starts. So a good bunch of people will be out. So fan, now the other nights, because you're there for quite a long time, you will be, you know, fighting more of a crowd, but those night, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, the, the evening shows will not have quite the demand that they will the other times. Yep. Agreed. All right. Next we have Nina, who's in our live chat on Facebook from Australia. Love that. And she says, hi, Mike, Pam, and Ricky. She's got some thoughts uh, from her uh, trip. She was from Australia and she says, happy holidays and wishing you a happy new year. I don't have any questions. If you answered so many for me previously, but thought I'd share some tips from my recent trip in December. 
We stayed at three resorts, movies, Pop Century, and Boardwalk. And on our nine-day trip, we attended Rise of the Resistance on opening day and a Christmas party. First, the new movies rooms are great. The only thing in terms of rooms that make Pop better is the shower head. In my particular room at Pop, we had a shower, which had a rainwater style head, plus one that is detachable and adjustable height, whereas movies just had one coming from the wall. This was a minor inconvenience when trying to take showers and keep the hair dry as I needed a shower cap. So, Ricky, is that a deal for you? Is that a deal breaker? I actually am. <laughs> I'm kind of in the minority. <clears throat> I actually hate the rain shower heads uh, and I much really? prefer one attached to the wall. Yeah, I, I'm i not in love with like water on my face. So uh, a rain shower head like just drops it right over my face. So I really hate rain shower heads. I like the wall mount ones better. I know I'm a weirdo. I'm a complete opposite person for most people. So, But I think it's what you don't have at home. Like to me, that's like a, that's like a cool thing because at home- No, I, so I don't have one at home, home, obviously. And I like, if there is a rain shower head and a, like the detachable one i keep the detachable one up on the the thing and i use that as a regular shower head for myself like it, that's just what happens i yeah i hate i hate rain shower heads so i sit there and whistle a uh, little april showers as i take my shower <laughs> with the rain head okay <laughs> anyway uh she said attending rise of the resistance on opening day was amazing we got to meet the project team at the end of the ride the joy in their faces was infectious i'm reading this carefully because i'm scared there's gonna be a spoiler in a good way my recommendation for getting on this ride in the next few months would be to get to the park at least one hour before opening. We were lucky enough to be staying at Boardwalk when opening or when it was opening. So we walked to Hollywood Studios, didn't even shower, just rolled to see the shower. Didn't even matter there. Oh, there didn't. <laughs> didn't even shower, just rolled out of bed and put on clothes and got there at 6.15 a.m. and got into the boarding group. Don't worry. We went home afterwards and made ourselves decent. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, they didn't smell anymore. Yeah, Good. Thank you. <laughs> folks on the rise. Uh, let's see. Uh, booking fast passes on the day when you've used your first three. If a fast pass comes up for a ride you want, but at an annoying time, just book it anyway. I found once booked, I could keep on pressing the particular hour I wanted the fast pass for, and normally one would pop up. This worked on so many occasions for me. I went on Kilimanjaro safaris three times in a row doing this. Wow. Pam, you, I know you've done this before. You just grab it and then you keep modifying, right? I do. I try again and again and again. I just play with the app to see what can come up. If worse comes to worse, if it's not what I want, then I'll switch it to something else. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just modify, modify, modify. Yep. yep. And she says, finally, booking restaurants I only had a party of one or two for my reservations. However, some restaurants I would find seating for four people for some reason. I'd book it anyway. Then as soon as booked, reduce the guest size down to my required size in the Disney app. Not sure if this trick would work for all party sizes, but hope it helps. Happy New Year again, Nina. So, you know, I love emails like this because that's practical advice. She yeah. was just there a few weeks back. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now, now when I'm at Pop next week, I'll have to check out the showerhead. I, Pop does have the rain thing, though, because I've been there. I was there in September, I think. Right? Yeah. Now I'm confused. Oh, no. It, it has a handheld one as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. All it right. has a rain. It has a handheld one for sure. I don't know that it has the rain one, but I think they usually do. That's what Disney's been doing. Like usually, it has two. Works for me. All right. This next question says, "Hey, Mike, this question's about football." So there you go. Right oh, this is my, Pam. You and I can go away for now. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for an attention getter for a subject line? She says, "Hey, Team Bogp, my boyfriend and I'll be visiting the world over Super Bowl Sunday, and our plans have us at Magic Kingdom." The following day for the infamous, I'm going to Disney World mm. post Super Bowl parade. My questions pretty much cover the entire subject. When does the Super Bowl parade for the winning team take place? Should we plan for normal crowds or stake out spots early in the day? Is there anything else we should know? I'm a seasoned Disney traveler, but in all my years as a podcast listener, I don't know if I've ever heard anyone address this once in a year event. Event. Any advice you have would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Melissa is 1,362 miles and 43 days away from Port Orleans, French Quarter. <laughs> so, Ricky, do you write about this on the blog? Because, I mean, the, I it's not the whole team, but it's usually the quarterback. And, you know, yeah. So, usually what it is, is, um, it, and it doesn't always happen the day after but most of the time it does uh it just kind of depends on uh where they're playing and things like that where is this year's super bowl mike I do you know? Not know okay anyway uh so yeah usually 
it usually takes place though uh, at the Magic Ooh. Kingdom. However, sometimes it does take place at Disneyland. Again, it depends on where they're playing. Uh, if it's going to take place at Disneyland. So if they're playing on the West Coast, uh, it might be at Disneyland. Um, they never say in the commercial, I'm going to Disneyland. Have they ever said that? I yeah, I'm going have. to Disneyland. Yeah. yeah. Disneyland? I've only heard Walt Disney World. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have done Disneyland. So it just depends on where they are. So I'm um, just letting you know that. Uh, and usually it's a little short, like pre parade type situation. Um, they usually have a few characters. They're usually dressed up in. Um, you know, football it's costumes and stuff like that. So the Chip and Dale are like dressed as referees, and you know, it you've got cool. Mickey that. dressed as a football player and Goofy usually, and I think Minnie is a cheerleader, stuff yep. like that. Yep. So um, they'll usually come out um, and let, and then they'll have the um, like one or two of the football players uh, come to the park and uh, and be in the parade. So um, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to pull up some articles that I've written to see it's usually what time it usually happens um but i'm not 100 percent sure and i think sometimes it varies um hold on i'm, I'm trying to do the re research now as i'm speaking <laughs> i want to say it's the next day usually around three o'clock in the afternoon i think it is but it's definitely a pre-parade i know that much um so that's the, the only one that i'm pulling up is from 2017 and that didn't help me so i didn't put the time in that one so they must not have announced it before <laughs> i did it and sometimes they don't announce the time because uh ahead of time because they really are coming off a plane and they're not entirely sure if they're gonna make it on time so sometimes it's like surprise they're here <laughs> you sold the super bowls in miami so there you go oh <laughs> gosh okay yeah so it's definitely gonna be in walt disney world uh so yeah uh, you'll you'll definitely see them at the Magic Kingdom, and it will definitely be the day after. So, um, yeah, just just get there early. the The park is a huge party atmosphere, uh, especially with the players of the teams that actually won. Uh, so, you know, they come out in full force usually to the Magic Kingdom for the parade. So, um, if you want to make sure you get a spot, get a spot early. early. Uh, I would say it will only happen on Main Street, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, I'm not sure if they start in Frontierland for those kind of parades. Um, I know it will for sure be on Main Street USA, though. So. Well, too, it matters what team wins. Say, like, the Patriots win, like, it'll be nuts because that's a big draw. If it's, like, the Saints, oh, my gosh, it'll be crazy. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. watch your back. Just, New Orleans people know how to party i heard that they drank every beer in the city of atlanta during the yeah season. apparently <laughs> it, uh, dry. Uh, yeah it, apparently it's a definitely crazy experience i'll just say that so i didn't go downtown uh i don't know uh, but yeah so awesome i love saints fans and lsu fans they're it's, crazy they're crazy in a good way but they're crazy so it, i can't wait to the national championship game but like if like the 49ers or the seahawks or somebody wins like the, it won't be as obviously because of geography it won't be as crazy correct exactly crazy. yes so anyway okay so anyway uh we have a question here from chip uh going in june for 10 days Got a six, four and 18 month old trying to decide if we should do a dessert party or after hours event. Oh, Pam, what are your thoughts on that? The 18 month old has me a little worried for either kind of late at night. So I would probably do the dessert party. Um, I, I just think that that gives you sort of a place, of, especially if you do the one where you get to go to the Rose Garden either before or after you get to have desserts and everyone likes desserts, right? Yes. Even, oh. even a little one. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to do that and then you get to spend some time in the rose garden that sort of crowd off well they don't call it the rose garden anymore but you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's a garden it has some fencing um i love to watch the fireworks from there because you don't have to stake out your spot like two hours in advance you get a pretty decent look and it's possible to sort of corral the kids in that area too. So I think those are all pluses for the dessert party. The after hours parties are absolutely great. And I would recommend them to most folks. I just wonder like how everyone's going to hold up with the after hours stuff. Um, you know, it can be a late, late night. So I'm leaning toward the dessert party. And they just announced more villains parties are coming to the magic kingdom. Correct. For 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I saw yes, that. It all right, next question. I like this question because I have an opinion. Of course. Stephanie says, is it reasonable to watch Fantasmic the night before my first marathon? We booked the Fantasmic dinner package that day on Saturday. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say. Probably not a good idea, but I will tell you, I've now run six Walt Disney World marathons. And because of the people I tend to hang out with, 
I'm always supposed to be in bed by 7.30 or 8, and I'm always still sitting at the patio at Olivia's having a Mai Tai at 9.30 or 10. <laughs> so it can be done, and it's fine because you're not going to sleep. The, the, the bottom line is, no matter what the perfect plan is, you don't sleep before your first, especially a marathon, the 26 mile race. Like that's no joke. Like you're not going to sleep at your first one. You're at Walt Disney world. You're going to worry about oversleeping. Just get out of your head that you're going to get a good night's sleep the night before your race. Not happening. So I'd say go see Fantasmic. Why not? I mean, <laughs> Pam, I mean, I, I, that's practical advice. I mean, I'd never sleep before the marathon anyway. You may as well go see Fantasmic. You'd just probably be sitting in your room, just like looking at the ceiling. Like, what am I doing? Yeah. Your friends can hang out all night talking. That's what that's what happened. I think it really depends on your style. Like, are you someone who needs like your eight hours of sleep, or you know, you can't function, or are you a little more loosey goosey? Um, you know, can you take some you know nights where you don't get quite as much sleep? Um, but you're you're on vacation too. In addition to it's it, you know you're not going to give up your whole vacation for this. You you want to do some of the fun stuff. So I say, go ahead. More important than the sleep is to be off your feet. That is the, that is the ultimate thing I've learned is that you don't want to be walking around. And you got to remember Fantasmic has a lot of hidden steps. I'm not kidding. Like just to go back to Fantasmic to snake back to the theater. That is true. Well, yeah. A quarter of a mile. And then you got to come out. That's another quarter of a mile. There's a half a mile and you're staying out, you know? So the sleep isn't the thing. It's the walking being and you, you're sitting in the theater, which is nice, but it's not super comfortable. Cause it's like a bench. I don't know. I, I would say still go though. Cause it's fun. not, it isn't super comfortable. You're right. It's a metal bench. Yeah, it is. And when they start the wave, then it's just, everybody's uncomfortable. Like, should I wait? Right. Should I not? You know, <laughs> it's awkward <laughs> as heck. It's totally awkward. <laughs> it is. Uh, next question. I had a good one here. Where to go? Where to go? Let's go. And Maggie says, my sister-in-law, a universal fan in parentheses says staying on Disney property is a bad value compared to universal studios. How can I explain to her that she is totally wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think both, cause I've stayed at both now and I know hard to believe, but I love Cabana Bay. I think that's a sweet place. And I like the resort or universal. They're neat. They're really cool. Like there's a Polynesian, you know, equivalent. I like Sapphire Falls. It's got a nice vibe to it. So mm -hmm. Pam, I think if you're going to either, there's just a huge advantage to stay at that resort. It's, it's, yeah, it I totally agree. I mean, if you're going to Universal, I would spend at least a night at Universal. If you're going to be at Disney, I would spend time at a Disney resort. There's advantages to both. I I don't know that the one is more advantageous as, as the other. She might be, uh, you know, sort of alluding to the fact that the legacy hotels, Hard Rock, Royal Pacific, and um, Portofino have unlimited express pass included with the stay there. That's actually not part of your ticket media. It's part of because you're staying there. If you have tickets into the park, you'll get to have what is basically unlimited fast passes to the rides of your choice. You don't have to schedule them, though. You can just show up and walk in that express line. So that is a huge benefit. They also, all the hotels, though, have access to extra, what their extra magic hour is. And, but there's still so many great benefits to stay at a Walt Disney World resort. I don't know, you know, why you wouldn't. You get to make your fast passes at 60 plus days in advance. You get a free magic band with your stay. You get extra magic hours. You get to make your dining reservations at for your whole trip at 180 days in advance. So for me, the draw to stay on site um, at both is very, very mm -hmm. strong. Plus, with both of them, they each have their own sort of dining plan, too, that you can utilize. So, I mean, both of them have really great reasons to stay on site. I don't think that one's better than the other. I just think they're a little different, but big pluses. And I don't think it's a... I know this is going to sound weird. I don't think it's a bad value. Um, there are some resorts at Universal, like Mike said, Cabana Bay, that I think are actually a really good value I agree. Um, as far as money is concerned. Um, I mean, if if you're looking at, at saving money, potentially, I mean, Universal has some great resorts on their property that are really inexpensive. I mean, you look at the endless summer resorts and, mm -hmm. you know, those are fantastically priced. So, um as far as value is concerned, I I think Universal is is actually a relatively decent value, um, and they do offer a lot of unique, like Pam was saying, a lot of unique things. Mm -hmm. um, so I 
I disagree with the bad value term. And I know that that's not what you want to hear um, because you want to us to convince you and convince about staying at Disney. And there are certainly good things about staying at Disney as well, like Pam discussed. But bad value is not one of the reasons, in my opinion. So good yeah. calls. All right. George Reeves has a question here. He says he got a 10 day park hopper for marathon weekend and he's thinking about annual passes. Is it worth it if I only go two times a year? And what does the difference look like on an average upgrade to an annual pass? So basically the way that works is you can upgrade it while you're there. You get the value of what you paid for the 10 day hopper. I think he said he has a 10 day hopper. Yep. Uh, towards the annual pass. Now you got to do the math. You got to go on the annual pass website, mm -hmm. see what the current price is. And because there's different tiers, you can get the one at the water parks, you can get the one without the water parks and so forth. And you just pay the difference. Now, is it worth it is a huge, it's a loaded mm -hmm. question because you are going to probably, you're going to get some dining uh, and merchandise discounts throughout the stay, which is nice. Both trips. Uh, that's a perk. You're also probably not all the time, but you probably can walk into an annual pass resort discount at some point on your second trip. If you're looking for that. Um, now, if you stay deluxe and you hit on a, you know, a discount for an annual pass, that can be a big savings because of how expensive the rooms are. But if you're staying at typically like an all-star or a pop century, you may only get five or 10% off. Then it doesn't accrue the value as quickly as far as the upgrade. It really does. This is the ultimate case. If you got to do the math and think about how many days you're going to be in the parks, what kind of resort you're going to stay in. And also your dining. If you can do a lot of table service dining at places that offer annual pass discounts, because some do, some don't, some do at lunch, some don't at dinner. It just depends. But I mean, it can totally be worth it. I mean, because if you're thinking about it, you've already paid a chunk. If you're ever going to get an annual pass and you have the 10 day hopper and you're thinking about it, it's not as painful to do the upgrade. I mean, you're probably talking in the ballpark of like $600. It's, that's still a lot of money though. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's a lot easier than paying the 1200 or so, the 1100 I think it is. I think I paid 1100 for my renewal. Whew. Crazy. It was just under 1100 I remember the other day because I renewed manual pass. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just got kind of crunch the math. All right, next question here is, it's from, where'd it go? Oh, it's from Donald. He says, uh, what should we do for a special day for a nine-year-old's birthday at Disney World at the end of January. And this is from Mackenzie. So I guess Mackenzie's the nine-year-old. Okay. End of January for a Dang. You know what? It took you, out the one I was going to say because I, okay, go ahead. If she likes basketball NBA experience. No, because seriously, she might like that. She might like that. You know what? Because we saw that thing on the Christmas special and Mallory was all about it. I'm like, really? You don't even play basketball. You're a cheerleader. And she's like, I want to shoot the basketballs because they did like the slingshot. The thing. slingshot. Like, that's the only thing that seems exciting about she's that. All yeah. about it. I'm like, Ricky said it's not fun. <laughs> did you really say that to her? I think I did. I tried to crush her <laughs> dreams. Um, I didn't no, 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 no. You're trying to make me crush <laughs> her dreams. That's, exactly that's yes. what it is. Yeah. yeah. That's what no, um, what I, maybe the characters in flight balloon, if she likes that, that'd be like a special thing. You might not do any other trip. This mm -hmm. spring, maybe I wouldn't do it because I'm scared of the thing, the cords coming loose and you end up in like Ocala or something. Man, crazy. Or, or Great Britain, okay. if, depending on how the wind goes. I don't know. What would you got say, it. Ricky? You got something? Well, I had something and then I realized that they said January uh, because the perfect thing I thought of was the mermaid school, uh, which I thought would be so much fun uh, for a nine year old. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not taking place during the winter this year. So that one's out. Um, but if you're going in the summer and you're looking for a really cool thing ever for a nine-year-old, that's going to do it. Um, so, well, I thought about maybe the void. Um, they have different experiences there. There's Star Wars. There's Wreck-It Ralph. There, oh, no, wait, the uh, um, Avengers one isn't at Walt Disney World. That's at Disneyland. Um, but, you know, you do have those options. Um, I think that those would be a lot of fun. So maybe that. I agree. Nine-year-old would be perfect do, for Void, I think. Since you can't do mermaid school, which I thought would have been perfect. I'm sorry. I want to do mermaid school. Dude, I would totally do mermaid school. I, <laughs> I would totally do. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. So I'm actually going to meet Jody Benson. I'm so excited. I, uh, I am actually going to meet her and I'm totally going to cry. So that's going to be awesome. Uh, thanks to give kids the world who's doing a fantastic event with Jody Benson. Um, it's it's uh, February eighth. I, I no tickets are sold out for like meeting her, uh, which is what I got. Uh, but if you want to go actually see her talk, you tickets are probably still available. So um, you can go to Give Kids the World and find out more. But I'm gonna meet Johnny Benson, and I'm so 
I'm screwed in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I'm so glad you clarified that by you're going to give kids the world to meet her because for a second it was kind of scary. I thought maybe you're taking her off. It was frightening, right? Can they get her house? Again, yeah, Jody, no. blink three times if you need me to come be. <laughs> so yeah, no, I'm going to give kids the world. So if you're looking for a really cool thing to do, it is a Sunday. So that's good news. Uh, although I'm still gonna have to take off work because I'll, you know, I can't get there back home by Monday. But still, I'm gonna go meet Jody Benson, and I'm so excited. Tears will actually, I will be a blubbering freaking mess, but it's okay. <laughs> It's okay. Make sure you Instagram that. Oh, it'll be Instagrammed, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. All right. My brother's coming with me. He will Perfect. he will definitely make sure that there's footage of something. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Renee's got a question. This one's gonna be for Pam. They're going in February during the arts festival. I love Festival of the Arts. I'm so mm -hmm. glad to get to go for I'm Princess too. for my birthday. I'm more excited for this Festival of the Arts, I think, than the Princess Half Marathon. But I mean they're both fun, but I just love being out there. What can we look forward to seeing or doing? And what are your favorite things to see or do? So Pam, what would you offer somebody for Festival? Festival of the Arts first time. Well, so first of all, you know, there's food booths, right? Yeah. Well, you you know, right? I mean, I, food, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know it's called Festival, you know, the Festival of the Arts, but it's more like Festival of the Arts and food. Like they yeah. should do that, right? They really should. Well, um, food is works of art, works of art. Are, and I would honest. say that the food at the, those food booths are some of my favorite. They yep. just really are. They really take some extra time to make them look spectacular. Um, so make sure you check those out. The other thing though that you need to check out is they have throughout the parks these little, um, you can put yourself in a famous work of art and have your picture taken. Remember to buy your memory maker before you leave. That's wow. always our top recommended add-on. Um, but you can go ahead and be part of, um, you know, a famous art piece of art. And I think that they add some new ones every year, but they have some traditional standard ones that they have too. And you'll just sort of go into that backdrop and they'll take your picture there. It's kind of a really cool souvenir. They also have great merchandise during mm -hmm. Festival of the Arts and lots of really cool things to do. Like they usually have a little area you can paint a square that becomes part of a larger mural that they put somewhere. They have some cool things. Um, in the Odyssey this year, they won't probably have as much of the little festival center because they have that really cool new thing there that sort of describes the future of Epcot and puts it all in this really cool show. Yep. But there's lots of cool things to do for Festival of the Art and the weather is usually really awesome. So that's one of my favorite times to go. God, I hope they have that that same dessert they had last year. It was like a little white kind of cake thing over at Sunshine Seasons. It had like all the oh, all yeah. on it. Oh, I had like three of those last year. <laughs> they were so good. Fat kid. I know. Well, yeah. I won a lot. So that's why. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> when to eat, eat to run. All right. Last question. Eric's got a simple one. What is mermaid school? <laughs> I mean, you probably don't want to see Mike Rallman doing mermaid school, but oh. somebody else might want to do it. Yeah, you definitely don't want to see Michael when doing Mermaid School. So um, Mermaid School happens at a select Walt Disney World Resort Hotels. And uh, I'm trying to get the actual like definition of it. And of course, I can't find it. Isn't it because... Art of Animation? I want to say. In the big uh, it is an Art of Animation. Yeah, hold on. Um, Pam, do you, uh, do you know? I know I have the list of the resorts, but. I don't um, know off the top of my head. I, I'm sorry. I do. I do have those because I just wrote about them. And um, I'll give you a chance to to find them because I'm going to tell a story that I did today in my real job. Which okay, got appreciate. it. I had to research which of the Walt Disney World resorts have tennis courts. Oh, mm. the, the legacy ones. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them. There's like I over know. I think I know. I'm contemporary. It was the only ones I could think of at first. Then I did the research. There's a lot of them. Animal wow. Kingdom has one. Yeah. Really? Over Kidani. Yeah. yeah. It's because we interesting. Yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. Walk Villas. Oak Key West. Really? Yeah. They're all over the place. There's like 10 of them. Huh. We, should, we should do there like. Uh, so many tennis. people are playing tennis, right? Uh, you never see them being used. No, exactly. Almost, Nobody's using this. I think in all the times I've been there. Off. One of our <laughs> guests, though, apparently is going to use right. I'm glad they're still there for them. But yeah, yeah, I think in all the times I've been, I've really seen people using them maybe once or twice. Yeah, okay. A couple too. That's weird. But that's cool. I, 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 I mean, it's it's want. great if that's what you're into. Yeah, I just, okay. that's not what I'm into. <laughs> All right, I'll solve for you there. If you I didn't you realize that there were that many. Like, that's what I'm oh, saying. Oh, so, that's the weird part is like, I didn't realize there were that many resorts that had, because they're kind of hidden. It's you know, you don't really see resorts. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's true. DVC would make sense. Yeah. Okay, so I found out where they are. So Mermaid School it takes place at Art of Animation, Caribbean Beach, and Disney's Yacht and Beach Clubs. And what it is is basically it allows guests to become part of Ariel's world. Uh, so uh, ages four and older, it's an hour-long class. You get fitted for with a swimmable tail, uh, and you get led through activities to teach you how to swim in the pool like a mermaid. So uh, classes are at least at the point of this writing, $50 a person. Uh, not sure if it's gone up uh, since then. And uh, reservations can be made online or by calling 407 WW play. So we yeah. should, I should have show for one thing. I should have totally got you this for the Christmas show last week. Okay. We should have combined this with you meeting Jody Benson. You could have done Mermaid School with Jody Benson. <laughs> with Jody Benson. Yes. Oh my God. I would have died. Her. I would have died. I uh Nate, you think she has to pay 50 bucks? We'll put up the 50 bucks if you can. I don't know. Uh if somebody can arrange this for it to happen, uh that I would I would uh I would donate a lot of money to give kids the world. I think that that would <laughs> Steven, if you're listening, we can make this happen. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it, it's not taking place, though, from January 5th through February 29th. So those are the dates that Mermaid School is going to be unavailable. So no that's, mermaid. Yeah, yeah, no oh. Mermaid School for you. So <laughs> That's awesome. I can't do Mermaid School. It's not going to be around. Uh, yeah. We need to get Jody Benson back in town for this. Well, that'd be the ultimate thing. Can you imagine if you walked out there and she was, like, sitting in the water? I would die. I would I would die. Like I remember as a kid, because we had a pool, and I remember swimming in the pool, pretending I was a mermaid with my mermaid. Like I didn't have fins. I just, you know, kept my legs together and swished them around <laughs> like a mermaid would. Like people see. Uh, but yeah, I would totally die if that happened. Like that would be my ultimate dream. Be cool. All right. Well, it's gonna do it for today's show. <laughs> Send those questions as crazy as they are to Mike at VRGuestpodcast.com. 2020 is gonna be awesome. We're off to a great start. So uh <laughs> Okay. <laughs> those in and we're going to answer those again for you next wednesday don't forget today's show brought to you by our friends over at virtualmickey.com home of great iphone apps like theme park news disney edition it's a free ios app and it's going to work great on all your new apple devices that you got over the holidays ricky what are we reading about this week on theme park news disney edition if you are a fan of m&ms i i got some news for you yes. m&ms orlando is coming to disney springs I'm behind so that, yes it's going to be a new state-of-the-art store that will uh be an experiential type store and uh it is expected to open in 2020 and uh it's going to have like uh so I guess they had an experiential type store in like one of the malls in Orlando. So that one's going to be closing. So the, that's going to just move over to the, the store, but um, you're going to get to do like immersive experiences and all kinds of stuff like that. So um, it's going to be located on the West side near the NBA experience because Wait, where, where's it going to be on the West side. Uh, God knows they're going to try to do as much as they can to get people over to the NBA experience. Please visit us here. We have, M's. We have candy. We will give you M&M's if you go into the NBA experience. <laughs> <laughs> Which M&M's is your favorite? I'm green. I like the green guy. I right. like green too. Oh, actually, I don't like M&M's at all unless there's a peanut what? in them. I think no. that the, the chocolate in an M&M is horrendous. Oh, oh all right. Uh, well, you, you're I, from Pennsylvania. You, you chocolate yeah, snobs. Hershey, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I, uh, I am actually a fan of the peanut butter one. And they actually have one that's kind of new. It is the toffee nut uh, one. It is so freaking good. It's like English toffee. Uh, oh, my gosh. It's to die for. So, yeah, get that. So there yeah. you go. Theme Park News Disney Edition. Get your candy fix. Find out what's coming to Disney Springs next because there's a lot happening. Uh, so grab it today over at virtualmickey.com. Please use our Amazon affiliate link, vrguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. And uh, you get all your prime benefits, cost you nothing extra. And it really does help support the show. So again, vrguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. Give us a follow on the social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter at be our guest pod and at be our guest mike will be lighting that up here next week for marathon weekend lots of live videos posts from the races from the parks from the resorts all the good stuff and of course facebook.com so be our guest podcast all right time to get out of here and we'll be back again on friday talking about all the stuff we lost in 2019 and there's a lot of it we're gonna talk about whether it was good or bad or eh, who cares so it's gonna be a fun show before pam and ricky i'm mike Wishing you a happy new year. Welcome to 2020. Happy new year. And happy we'll new year. See you real soon. What are you laughing at? Do you hear my cat just no. <laughs> screaming bloody murder? Oh, but you're sitting there trying not to laugh. I'm like, would you have a booger or something? I was like, oh. <laughs> no, I thought you guys could hear we my gotta cat. We got to have like a booger code in all these years of podcasting. <laughs> we don't have one. We have to be like. 
It has to, you yeah. can't be like oh. you have a bat in the cave because everyone knows. I that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally trying to close the show out. I'm like, I got a bat in the cave for sure. Like, <laughs> you gotta do like, I don't know. <laughs> we gotta <laughs> think of something. <laughs> Everything I can think of is inappropriate. So. Yeah, probably. Exactly. And we're so glad you're here live because you get the good stuff. Exactly. <laughs> when they say about boogers. <laughs> Sarah's is that another kind of chocolate? Um, yes, Renee, you're right. Sarah's is the best in PA. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Um, why have I not had Sarah's, Pam? I mean, um, I don't know. Next time you're here, we'll have to get you. I'm some sad Sarah's. about this. So this good. Happen. Yes, Brian. So good. Come here. Okay, we'll figure out what the cat's meowing about because he's wow. meowing like crazy. Oh, this is, oh this is some okay. good, good podcasting. This is why we're on that medium top. To <laughs> decade list. This is why we this is it. Out for a decade, man. This is it. Because <laughs> only 17 shows made it the whole decade. And made it. <laughs> 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 uh, and this process of like, elimination. Exactly. I mean, we're just, we're just we just outlasted them. them. Yes. That's, it. Totally that's it. it. That's, that's so it. So I told Mallory, I'm like, Psh, our podcast was in the top shows of the decade on the internet. She's like, yeah, 31. I'm like, there's like 700 million <laughs> podcasts. I'm like, Give me a break. It's 31. You're 31. I'm like, out of 7 million shows, everybody's got seven podcasts nowadays. They all have like three episodes, but come on. That's Miracle. right. Exactly. I know. Have you noticed? Like, I'll notice, oh my gosh, there's like a new podcast that pops up. It's like they're in episode five. They're like, that's it. You know, that's that's it. maybe they'll be in. In which they never come back from. No. no exactly. anyway, so Pete has a question uh, real quick. Um, I would use a town car service. Like you could use Tiffany, you could use mirrors, but yeah, if you got a long, flight, if you got a long flight, I would do that. Uh, okay. So let's get to one, five, eight, five. Is your cat. Okay. Is it gone? No. Opie. Come here. That's right. We're the Opie. driver out with out last out play out podcast. Yeah. <laughs> out podcast. That's it. Oh. Opie. It's true. All right. All right. We just keep doing it. That's right. Maybe he'll come upstairs. He stopped meowing. So okay, here we go. <laughs> no, he didn't. Never mind. Get him out of here if he's doing it. He's downstairs. That's why I can hear him. Right. He's mad. Brian went outside. Okay. Tough. All right. Here we go. Welcome to episode 1585 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel. Happy Friday to you and welcome to the first weekend here of 2020. For a lot of folks, I know that this long holiday stretch is wrapping up and so uh, enjoy those last few days home with friends and family. I know a lot of folks have been working through the holiday as well, so Hey, you deserve this weekend. You need to rest up. It's been crazy. And for all the folks getting ready to depart down to Florida, all the lizards getting ready for Marathon Weekend 2020, it was so far off on the horizon for so long, and now it's just a mere few days away. Safe travels. See you down there. We're going to have a fun time running the races, having all the meals, having the fun in the parks. Be careful on the way down. Can't wait to see everybody. I leave on Tuesday. So joining me today to talk about all the stuff we lost at Walt Disney World in 2019, the stuff you will no longer see in 2020, we have Ricky from a DisneyWorldAfterAll.com, TouringPlans.com, and The Mouse for Less. What's up, Ricky? Well, I am not one of the things you lost because I'm still here writing yeah. away and all the various websites that I write for, so I'm still here. <laughs> you are always here. Yes, exactly. So, yep, I, uh, I am so, like, floored that it's 2020. 20 like i'm we're living in the 20s now where's my flapper dress and uh i gotta get one i'm just saying it's it's the, tw it's the roaring 20s i'm still What's writing this? 2019 on my checks right exactly wait you still have checks no, with this <laughs> that was the old thing there's so many things like that people used to say like 10 years ago like oh i'm still writing that year on my checks now who has no. a check nobody has checks anymore yeah so yeah it's just crazy that we're in the roaring 20s again so here we are are these are these going to be called the roaring 20s i don't know <laughs> i, don't I mean know. do we have to like dress like flappers and like uh you know gangsters now and all that i mean we totally should we i'm should. just saying yeah, true. we should next Probably podcast should. mike i want to see you in your gangster outfit so oh, yeah. let's go Might let's do this <laughs> all right also joining us we have pam she is the co-owner of the magic for less travel sorry i was distracted by the gigantic cat that just walked in front of ricky <laughs> What's up, Pam? Welcome to the weekend. Welcome to the weekend. I, why do the weekends that occur 
on a short week in which there was a holiday seemed to be more needed yes. than other weekends. I mean, Agreed. I think that that's just how it is. So I'm already looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We need this one. All right, here we go. So let me hold it up. We got a little Karnak action happening. You have a friend in me. Oh, man. It's from our friend, Dennis. I gotcha. Um, so it's from Dennis. That's that's just the, he's the friend in him and us. <laughs> what did Bruce the shark say to Nemo's father after he swallowed Dory? Oh, oh wow. my! Um, that got dark real fast. <laughs> that would be a good one for the Monsters Inc. Laugh floor. It would yeah. be. Yes, that's true. We should submit that one and say it's ours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are going to kind of hop around. We have a couple of sources that we're using for today's show. The blog over at touringplans.com. So blog to touringplans.com. Derek Thurman or Derek Bergen had a Derek Thurman's uh, one of our listeners <laughs> I talked to all the time. Too many Derek's around here. Derek Bergen uh, did a post a few weeks or a few days back um, about stuff we lost in 2019. Also, there is a, um, a post on Twitter by the Mad Chatters. It's a video which apparently is like awesome. a of The Walking Dead, which I don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, or those in memoriam videos yeah. that happen at the end of every yeah. year when yeah, you know like the they yeah the oscars and stuff yeah, like yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're going to yeah. talk about all the stuff that is no longer with us and that we lost in 2019 we'll kind of talk about whether yeah you know, sad that it's gone uh who cares that it's gone or you know it, good riddance yeah i need you to go thank you don't turn out the lights when you leave all right first thing let's talk uh restaurants bongo's cuban cafe Pam, what's your thoughts about that no longer being here in 2020? I'm okay with that. <laughs> I never went to Bongos and I always wanted to. Like, but, no. <laughs> but I never ever went there. So I have been to Bongos and it was fine. But first of all, you know, when you were looking for a last minute, like I need to get a last minute reservation somewhere bongos was always available right and so i think that that doesn't bode well either people no. didn't like the type of food or were unfamiliar with it or whatnot now when i ate there the few times i had the food was fine but i think that it just never really seemed to catch on and be a place that people really wanted to go to and experience it so if you know i think if there are restaurants like that that people just don't get I think that you can't blame people for not getting it right. You have to blame the restaurant in one way or another. So I'm not blaming the restaurant, but I'm just saying it's probably better that we have a, a new restaurant come in that appeals to more people. Is this like a grocery store that it's going to become or something? I mean, it's not going to. No, go it's going to be Beatrix, uh, which is like a, it's another restaurant. So, oh, yeah. 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 Beatrice. I mean, I was its target audience. Like, I was a big Miami Sound Machine fan in the 80s. You, I don't know that you were really got it. the target audience. No. The rhythm is going to get you. The rhythm got it. <laughs> I will say, uh, it, so for those who are going to miss their bongos type experience, uh, the restaurant, not in name, but it did move over to Margaritaville. Uh, so uh, they just kind of moved it. So it still exists in one form or another, just uh, not at Disney Springs anymore, which is fine. I think that that's perfectly, uh, I think it was a good move for them and a good move for Disney. So I think either way, it's a good thing. So, well, it, yeah. was just, it was huge too. I mean, that building was Yeah, it was there. gigantic. It was. Yeah. But I, do, it was. I wish I would have gone there once. I feel bad now. They had like, roaming like, performers too. Oh, they did? The yeah. Gloria. It was not, not when I was there. <laughs> no, not when I was there. I mean, they were fine performers. It was just a little loud and a little challenging to hear the people that you're there with, you know, stuff like that. So, oh, yeah. Um, no, oh, stop. I just think of Congo because that's the song my mom loves. So, uh, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to share what Beatrix is, by the way. Uh, so <laughs> it is brought to life by Lettuce entertain you enterprises it's l-e-t-t-u-c-e by the way um it's going to be a table service restaurant coffee house and grab and go market uh so that's where you got the market idea from it's not a grocery store yeah it's not a grocery store it's going to be like a grab and go spot uh which features healthy food options including vegetarian gluten-free and vegan it will offer off also offer specially uh, fresh squeezed juices cocktails and bakery uh with a full service bar and it will have coffee and pastries and uh, that's all I know about Beatrix. There are a few other restaurants um, 
that are open in other places, obviously Chicago being one of them. So, um, yeah, so that's coming soonish. I know they're working on the restaurant now, like they're building it. So, yeah. so yeah. welcome to the 2020 list. When we talk about stuff that's gone in 2020, Beatrix will be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are a few other Disney Springs <laughs> restaurants that even no came through the refurbishment that are going to be on this list okay, instead maybe, of that maybe one. 2021. Paradiso 37. Bye. I got another place. I want to go there. I want to go there. Yeah. Um, I, I so want to go there sometime. I've it wasn't been. bad. It's just most people don't think about it. So I know. And it's got yeah. a huge menu. It's like a really normal, like food I, kind yeah. of stuff. Like, Bye, like, STK. Like See you later. Yeah, I think those here. are all, uh, yeah, those are all gone. Right, here, let's get to the, let's get to the brass tacks here. McDonald's <laughs> over by the all-stars. Gone. Is it coming back though? I yes. think it's maybe rebuilt, right? It is being rebuilt into a newer version of McDonald's. <laughs> yes. Have you ever stopped and eaten there? We have. No. I've been there many times. Of course you have. No, I have not. I don't eat McDonald's unless I'm have problems. So <laughs> and have you ever been to the all-stars McDonald's? I've been there many times. No. No, no, I don't. Uh, that's an unqualified no from me. A big old no. Yep, I eat McDonald's like <laughs> once a year, and it would not be at Walt Disney World. Where and I'm I, it. Yeah, I just think like I don't know. You know, everyone has their shtick and what they enjoy, but uh, I, it's just not my thing. And no. I don't. I, there's other places I'd rather go. So. Yep. But it could be the world's. It needs to be the world's coolest McDonald's when they rebuild. I'm sure it will be when it's rebuilt. It's pretty normal, like the old. The world's coolest McDonald's, though, is still on the list of stuff that I'm gonna do at Disney. Not it's still far down the list. I don't know, man. I don't know. I we actually, man. you don't know. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. We went there with the gardeners because while we were on one of our trips, they debuted. And I can't remember what it was. It was some kind of a sandwich. Like uh, some kind of like a modified Big Mac or like a chicken. Sandwich. I can't remember, but it was only in certain markets and it was only in Orlando, but they had it at that one. And we went there. I remember because when we ordered it, it was the night it was before Trump was elected. He was doing like a, a rally and like they had to rush him off the stage like he was about to get shot or something like th there was like a security scare. He was on the stage like Secret Service came out and dragged him off. While we're standing there waiting for our whatever the special sandwich was. I still like it's one of those things like you just remember where you were. And that we went there because Orlando was going to right. get that burger. So okay. there's a long story. Okay, next one. Tangent, but okay. Yeah, that's a weird one. Okay, so Liberty Inn. Good, you know, the thing <laughs> is, it's, a, it's kind of a pretty area, but I, good riddance. It was underused. I mean, what do you think, Pam? I mean, I'm glad for the, the barbecue, man. Bring it on. I am so looking forward to what they're replacing this with that I like here, let me help you pack up your crap and get out the door. <laughs> what can I do to help you rebuild this? Right. Here, what do we need? What do we need here? <laughs> like I mean, can I a hammer? Where I'll do I a hammer, power drill, whatever. I'm you know, I can come. No, I just think that again, it's like I, I want to say, is this what the rest of the world thinks that we eat? Like I hope not. <laughs> I mean, right? and maybe they're all saying that like maybe the people in Morocco are like, do people think that this is what we eat? What's served here at in the Morocco restaurant or in the Tangerine cafe? But anyways, no, I just think that there are so many little unique little spots in America that have really interesting food that we should be highlighting something. And I have my socks, like my tube socks with the stripes, uh, ready to go in my shorts with the like, you know, the red shorts, like the white stripe up the side and the on the bottom. You know, because <laughs> oh. It's illegal beagle. I mean, Jack Tripper and you know, that's right. And, and Come and knock on my door. <laughs> not ready. For you. Oh man, so, Ricky, I'm, like one to ten. I'm like one to ten. I'm ten on this one. I can't wait. Well, I mean, nine space space. The restaurant would be. Ah uh, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh yeah, I'm. I'm like a nine. I think that I'm very excited about the new uh, Regal Beagle. So I think it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would like if they still kept the like um, historical flags though from the different states. Like I loved That's those. True. I think that could fit with the theme. I mean, along with my little wooden dish where they're going to put my pretzels, you know right. what I mean? They could, like the Regal Beagle or some kind of <laughs> snack mix. Yes. Dude, they should totally have snack mix. <laughs> I hope Larry will be there. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Larry. Larry was under. I uh, want to see Mr. Roper as well. Yeah. Yeah. And Mrs. Yeah. Roper. Yes, yes. in those moo moos. Awesome. I would like a moo moo. Oh, oh, that would be. That, they should. Disney should totally troll everybody and just have like some actors out there just the first day. Do, 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 <laughs> can you imagine Twitter would break? Yeah, it would. <laughs> Disney Twitter would. That's for sure. That's oh cool. my gosh, people would lose their darn minds. They it would, would absolutely would. happen. Right here, we need to dress up and just be there. That's it. 
I could pull I mean, off. you can pull off. We we can totally we have all three hair colors. We can totally do this. I think Pam and I and you could totally pull this off. I'm on top of that now right now looking for fun. <laughs> Pam could be Suzanne Summers. I think it would work out well. It totally work. <laughs> um, so here we go. This is gonna hurt. You can go into Pam. Okay. R.I.P. Misner's Lounge. Oh, I'm still a little upset about this, people. <laughs> I think I need a hug. <laughs> So I have, you know, been to the new location and I'm going to say there are some positives about it. It's larger. It has an outdoor space, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, things I don't like. Hmm. I don't the like color. that the band is downstairs, first of all. I think that I loved the band up on the second floor. And since they've did since they've done made this change, the band is down on the first floor. So I don't love that. Um I don't love that you can't that you aren't in a location where you can kind of hear the band while you're hanging out there. Like that was one of my favorite things to do is to sit there and have a drink and whatnot. Um they have some interesting drinks now. I do like some of the little Disney touches. I think that they're really cute and cool. And I know it's like a more popular place that appeals probably to more people. Um, I just feel like it was a little piece of like old, old Disney world. You know what I mean? That's sort of gone. So, I mean, you know, I'll just be nostalgic about it for a little while. I'm, it's not like I'm going to put my feet down and be like, I'm never going into the new bar. I mean, that's not going to happen, my friends, but you know, I, I do miss the original Misners. I really do. And I think it felt, it just fit in with the resort so well. I just, I, I hope they don't continue to, to keep this trend and get rid of like a territory lounge or a Bellevue, you know, because they can find some kind of IP connection, which I understand that this is, I've heard and I haven't been there yet, but that it's, it's not horrible. I mean, it's, you know, if you're a Beauty and the Beast theme, it's fine. I think the problem that people have is that it replaces something that is, like you know a to like apples to apples to grand floridian and misners they just go together so well it really did because it was the whole point was it was like an old floor it was like old florida and that's sort of what the grand floridian was supposed to be about you know um so i mean it's fine i understand that they want to have something that maybe appeals to more people and you got to have that instagram drawn i will be the first to admit that misners did not have that i wasn't no, it like did not <laughs> <laughs> with me getting my regular drink at Misner's with my mixed nuts. You know what yes. I mean? But it was just a part of old Disney that I really enjoyed. All right. Here's the next one, Ricky. Here we go. Cause I think this uh, affected you. The leave a legacy. <laughs> well, really, the whole in front of Epcot, let's just say interventions. We'll talk about some other stuff, but like the front part of Epcot before he hit spaceship earth, all that remodeling. Are you going to miss the, the, the leave a legacy model? I, I am I'm in mourning right now over the loss Justin of the Justin Timberlake leave a legacy tile right now. Just have a moment <laughs> of silence, please. That's when his hair was curly. It was. Just, <laughs> just I'm, I'm having a moment of silence. Okay, we're good. Um, no, bye bye. See you later. It's yes, bye bye bye. Exactly. Let's, Let's go. go. Get out. <laughs> no, it doesn't belong. It was ugly. It was awful. They look like tombstones. Bye. Bye bye bye. It's fine. See you later. Yeah, let's see what you did there. Yeah, see the picture. Ah! Right the in seek right here in the article, and there's a uh, Joy Fatone who does uh, uh common knowledge every day yes. on the uh, game show. Yeah, he does a lot of he does a lot of things with like impractical jokers and yeah. Oh. So. Yeah, and he lives in Orlando. I know people see him all the time down there. So yeah. Okay, but let's get serious here. Seriously, because okay. we, we lost that front stuff, which I'm glad. I mean, go away. We need some green space there. I like it. But like, for example, we've lost Club Cool. And that, here's where it gets personal because we've had some events there over the past <laughs> decade. And we had a huge one in the history of our podcast where Jay, I mean, <laughs> Poor he Jay. Drank in, ungodly amount of Beverly for, right. for your kids, the world. I mean, I like, agree. that was the best thing that happened there. That was the best thing that happened there. That was the best thing that happened. And I think here's the thing, like, okay, club cool. will probably the, the Coke partnership will probably come back in some form or fashion somewhere. I'm guessing probably maybe not, but probably. Mm -hmm. But the thing is with these areas going away, like interventions, I think everybody might have a memory or two, maybe where you were there for new year's Eve and, you slept out like a refugee inside of interventions <laughs> until the fireworks. Cause it was the only place you could, you know, move. Yeah. Uh, Cause I've you saw lost the shoe at club. Cool. Yeah. The floor was so sticky. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what people are going to have. Like, uh, you know, the most random okay. memories. Away okay. with this, this 
I got like hives walking into the club cool building. I swear that stickiness like really did not appeal to me. It was like you heard people's shoes sticking to the yes. floor over and over again. Ew. I don't know what they have to do to get that stickiness off. I bet they're like burning it down back there or something behind the, uh, the walls where they're doing construction. They, they have, they've, yeah, they've set it on fire. They've bulldozed it. They've used some kind of acid to try to pull that up from the, uh, whatever. So yeah. anyways, no, I mean, I get it. Like everyone will have a little memory here of some of the things we're losing in Epcot, but isn't this all what we've all sort of been asking for for a while is to sort of start over with the front of Epcot? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, like exactly. Forward. Actually, did so. you know, Mike, I found this out and I was absolutely floored. Um, but did you know that they stopped making Beverly and that no. the only, yes. So the only reason it is at uh, Disney is because they made it especially for Disney and a few other locations, but they don't make Beverly anymore. Disney uh, had a big vat of it stored in the no, back. So <laughs> Coke actually makes Coke Best makes Buy. It, correct, exactly. <laughs> Coke makes it for um, Disney and I think um, like probably the a world of Coke here in Atlanta uh, and a few other places, but they don't actually make it anymore. That's all thanks to uh, Carly Weisel, who is uh, a, like, you know, been become really popular in the Disney community lately. Like we've had this conversation about how they stopped making Beverly and mm -hmm. it was really something that they only made for a few locations. That's it. So well, like Eric says, Club Cool kind of lives on in Disney Springs, the Coke store, you know? Yeah, that's true. Stuff, but... That's true. Yeah. Um, so again, good riddance. The only thing I think we'll all miss is something that I think we're discussing later. Yeah, so. Here's the thing I never thought would go away. Found in nations. Right. I mean, because I thought they could build around that because it's water and we're looking at more green space, but I get that it's like, the Fountain of Nations is kind of like, it, it would be hard to do full on remodel, rework the whole future world mm -hmm. and yeah. not touch the like very center of the piece of land. That'd be hard to work around. But I mean, Pam, I mean, if somebody had told you Fountain of Nations will go away, would you have thought that? Like, I would not have thought that offhand, but it's. I don't know. Maybe the past few years, just because I don't know that it, like, honestly, I will just say, I don't think it has the appeal to folks who are walking mm -hmm. in the doors for the first time and seeing it. Like, really, truly, I don't. People walk right past it. Like, you know what I mean? There will be the show. And I don't fault people for that. I mean, you know, in today's society, a dancing fountain is not that rare anymore, right? Solid, yeah. Other places have them. So, um, you know, I, I, it was something that I thought would could happen really and truly. Now, I again, I feel like this was part of you know the original epcot for me i remember walking in and really thinking it was cool but it was a long time ago that i thought it was really cool so i really liked it i enjoyed it and i'll be anxious to see what comes next because it looks awesome yeah i remember i remember in the late 90s we drove out to yosemite and we stopped through vegas and on the way out we stopped in vegas for like two nights and we went down and watched the bellagio you know water yeah and that was like state of the art. Like that was crazy. Yeah, we right. watching, we'd say that we watched like three or four different shows. Like they were, you know, you'd wait 20 minutes and another one would come on. They play different music, they dance. You're right. I mean, that's more common. Cause like Ricky, you know, at the, um, Ameristar casino yep. here in St. Charles, I mean, in their lobby, they have those like, uh, yep. imagination, the water tubes that dance, mm -hmm. do all that stuff. I mean, who cares if it's, if it's the Ameristar down the street, it's probably not the big deal. I just think that it was a nice kind of water feature. I love the music that dun, 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 dun. Oh, no. so majestic. So I'll totally miss it. But I mean, for the overall good, I think we got to go with it. So yeah, that's true. We it should. was sad to lose it though. It was sad to lose it. Yeah. You know, they brought water from all over the world for that. They did. Yep. You got to watch the imagination. Maybe right? they kept a little bit of it. I think they did actually. I heard they did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows they, did. they did. They probably well, did yeah. it out of the sink. I mean, come on. <laughs> It's water of the world. It's from the bathroom. Thing. I can just tell you, somebody, like, you know, you're carrying it like, you know, some intern, some college program kids got it. And like, they're just, you know, they don't realize what they have. They take a big, they're like, God, oh, it's hot in here. Like, <laughs> let me drink it all. That's been there since 82, kid. Oh, my God. No, that's what they do with all the leftover Dasanis. Ah, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> no, the <laughs> Evians. Evians, Pam. Oh. <laughs> Ew, no. Uh, you know, though, I will say, so we haven't lost Mouse Gear yet, but it is about to close and be refurbished. Uh, here's what I'm hoping the, happens. The bank is closed. Yes. <laughs> Please, dear God, please get rid of the smell. Just if you do.
do anything in mouse gear. Please make it smell Disney, less like get a sewer. rid of the sewer smell, please. Please. It's true. It's true. Please. You okay. know that they do have the child shirts now. Oh my gosh, they do. I know they I was there and they had the socks were just coming out. So yeah, they have the child um, everywhere. All right, so this next one, I'll make sure I, I've seen them a couple times. Um, and I know there's a huge outroar on social media over this. Is it Burdika? Because I, I Burdika. Burdika. It's Burdika. B U R U D I K A. The the live band in yes. Harambe over in uh, Animal Kingdom gone, but yes. ap apparently they're going to be back. Well, they were back on New Year's Eve at Animal Kingdom. Yeah, I saw that. So yeah. last night or yeah. no earlier this week. Yes. <laughs> I forgot what day this. Whatever, show. whatever day it is. Yeah. They came back for like a one night uh, special uh, extended show. So. Thoughts on this, Ricky, with, uh, you know, this, because I mean, we've seen this over the past decade, you know, yes. scaling back live entertainment in the parks. I have actually wrote an article on the Mouse for Less about why this live entertainment is so important and why Disney needs to stop scaling it back like they have been. Um, because, you know, I know it's not the things that people book their vacations for but it's the things that help to make their vacations special matter of fact when we were just down there um you know for uh for christmas um we walked into hollywood studios and you know we didn't have a plan i mean i was literally walking in to get my rise to the resistance fast pass and that was all i had planned for the day so uh or not fast pass boarding pass but um so the first thing we did we came to was the streetmosphere and we stopped and watched streetmosphere for a good i want to say 10 15 minutes because the it was the live entertainment that 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 pulled us in and it was entertaining and it was fun and funny and it's things like that that really make disney what it is and so losing bands like Veridica or another thing that i talked about in my article that's on this list as well that we lost this year um those are big deals like it it may seem like a small cut and you know uh, like for disney because it's like oh we're just cutting these musicians they they make a lot of a lot of money i use that in quotes uh you know as opposed to being us being able to hire somebody who's not been here this long or whatever um but those things are things that are important to people's vacations so um i have a huge soapbox about this <laughs> but the thing is like the, your typical guest is there to ride rides and i know do that stuff i think like us and yes I, i'm circling everybody listening today we're like in a big group hug you yeah. know, us, because we tend to go more than once and that that live entertainment is just essential. Absolutely. It be for the first time guests. Absolutely. And that's what Disney needs to keep in mind. They're not just appealing the first time guests, which sometimes <laughs> I think they forget. Um, but, you know, you have to do things that keep people coming back and um, keeping them excited. And that's one of the things that that does. So, I, yeah, I think this was a huge loss. So, yeah. So talking about a big one. Get ready, folks. I'm ready. Reflections of Earth, Ugh. illuminations went away. I can't believe it in 2019 because when we started the show way back in the day, Henry Work and I were going to chain ourselves to the railing at Epcot yes. the night that they were going to close illuminations. I was down there, but I did not chain myself. I did not get arrested. Yay! We're not Jane Fonda. I don't do that. You know, like she gets arrested every day. It seems <laughs> like I see on the TV. I did not. Um, and here's the thing, like I loved Illuminations. I loved the music. I played it for my class every day. I played that CD that had Illuminations and Tapestry of, of uh, Nations. Mm -hmm. Like I played that every day during silent reading because I just, I love it. Like I've, I've told myself if I was ever to go onto an island and you only got to take one CD for the rest of your life, that's the music I would take, that mm -hmm. CD. That's how much I love it. And I love the show. But I will say that times do need to change and we do need to have something new. Now, Epcot Forever, I like it. I know a lot of people don't. I think it's okay. I mean, I think it's a, they're giving the fans just a little something, something. You know what I'm saying? Like they're giving the folks like us. Until you get to the end. <clears throat> anyway. But I mean, it, you know what? It's a bridge. Build a bridge and get over it. It's what my friend Dan was just <laughs> me. Yeah. So the thing is, it's fine. It's It's fine. And I think that Harmonious will be... I hope it knocks it out of the water. No, it's IP based, but I give them a shot. I mean, Pam, what are your thoughts? I mean, I think we all kind of agree that, you know, as awesome as Illuminations was, we, we can't have it forever. 
Agreed. I think it was really time for Illuminations to go. I mean, it had been performing way past the time that it was expected or planned to mm-hmm. go. And I think we just deserve another show because as we talked about, sort of like the Fountain of Nations, that we've sort of progressed from that point in terms of technology and what people find exciting and interesting and willing to, um, you know, stay in the park that long for and invest the time and effort that might be required to see a nighttime show. So I think it's time. I think that we saw a lot of cool things in the show that's playing right now. I think we'll see a lot more when they make the final transition. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to see it, see it come. I, I, I think it's just, you know, Illuminations was loved by so many. And just because it was loved doesn't mean it should stay there all the time. So good point. All right. A couple more. It's uh, we're running a little long here. Hollow Wishes had its <sighs> said goodbye in 2019. Ricky, I know it's one of your favorites. Yeah, it was. And I have seen both the versions um, of Hollow Wishes as well as the updated. Uh, well, it's Mickey's not so spooky spectacular and then Minnie's something. Cr- anyway, the one for the Christmas uh, party. <laughs> I saw both of them this year. Um, I thought the, the mini one was fine. Uh, the not so spooky spectacular is fine uh i like the use of the projections on the castle i appreciate the fact that they have added them to the fireworks show for the holiday parties i think that they are a nice addition to have i just really really miss hollow wishes i think hollow wishes was by far a better fireworks show overall um you know i i get that this one has a somewhat better story more linear story now um but Hollow Wishes, I thought was just spectacular. And I, I think that if they had added the projections to Hollow Wishes, I think it would have been better. But that's just my opinion. Um, so anyway, I desperately miss Hollow Wishes. Um, I wasn't as big on um, the Holiday Wishes. Um, I know a lot of people were, but Holiday Wishes didn't, that one didn't do it for me. So it was kind of a even comparison for, for those holiday shows um, for me. But um, yeah, Hol- Hollow Wishes is definitely missed by me. So. Good, good points. I got, I got a few more. I'm going to get in here. So Pam, what about this one? The walk around the world bricks. I'm, I'm sad to see that they actually destroyed those. I know that they have to redo because of just how the world's changed in the last decade as to how we enter a theme park now. And also the crowds, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of like the studios and how they've redone, uh, you know, animal kingdom to get in and Epcot's getting there and the magic kingdom. Like it's, it's a lot easier to get in than it was three, four years ago, which I'm, I'm all about. Like they're pushing out the security further. I like it, but I'm the, that just felt like it was so essential. Like Walt Disney world, those bricks. I didn't have one, but I just always like looking down and seeing like, God, that, that family probably made that memory back in 92 and they see it every, every year or something. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm sure that it is, it is upsetting to some, but the, I think the issue really was not only was, do we have the issues with the way that we're entering the parks that we have to deal with, but also those bricks were getting really worn down and oftentimes you couldn't see the names or things like that on them. So I think it really had to go. And honestly, to take those out individually in a way that they could be saved for anyone, that was crazy. I mean, I saw people saying like, I want my brick and I'm like, well, that's not the agreement that you made when you purchased the brick. That was only supposed to be there for a set amount of time. Mm -hmm. It's actually way exceeded that. So, I mean, again, I understand the memories attached to it. And I hope that people understand that the, you know, you do need to move forward. I I just have to say as a germaphobe, like I'm not a huge germaphobe, but like I'm enough of a germaphobe. I wouldn't want that brick at all. Like, oh, many, so many things have been all over that brick. (laughs) Like, no, thank you. I, you can keep it. I like the version i didn't have one either but i like the version that i bought at disney like it you know i i have one now uh, Me too, i have one now so i really shouldn't complain so like i don't know i wouldn't want something that people have walked all over with their dirty shoes so and more because goodness knows that enough stuff had been probably on those i think it, that that brick like, would have seen a thousand sunsets and a thousand sunrises I, at Disney World. no no 
you can keep it. I'm I know again, I'm in the minority on that probably, but like you can keep my brick. I like the other one that I have now that I have in my display yeah, right I, here. I do like mine under the it's under the TV upstairs. Yeah. Okay, uh real quick, Muppets in Liberty That's Square. the other one I was talking about. Yeah, that was the other I, loss. I just don't understand that one either because like I don't think it's that it can't be that expensive to do. And I thought it was a good you need extra I, stuff to do, and it was a hit. I like I think it was expensive because you had puppeteers. I mean, you know, I I mean, that's that that's yeah. not that's a i think that's an equity job so when you really look at it that way and you have to hire equity performers for something like that yeah it's gonna get cut because they cost a lot of money to hire equity They're performers. Charging a lot of money to get into the place. i know mike i agree oh, with you on that that's what made office. me mad about it but again how many times did you see that many people stopping to watch that show i saw a fair number actually whenever like it wasn't a thing that people like stood there mm -mm. to like line up for for the start of the show but as the show was progressing on people started standing there and watching the show it, it wasn't something because th let's be honest it wasn't like super published of when it was no. happening so a lot of people didn't know hey the show is happening but once you saw it and you saw it was occurring i, I saw so many people stop and watch that show yeah. There were plenty of times when I walked past where it was like less than 10 people, honestly. <laughs> it just depends. I mean, <laughs> it was also in a terrible location in the sense of it was in the middle of the sun. So, I mean, there was no shade. There was nowhere to like get any any covering so you had to watch it with the sun blazing down on you so in that regard i do understand like why you may have saw only 10 people <laughs> because like I, yeah i wouldn't want to stand out you know in the middle of you know the sun for that long but if, i mean if you walked past the muppets sam eagle is exactly right you are distinctly unpatriotic <laughs> <laughs> i think if they had put it in a different location in a location that maybe had set times as well as had shade i think it might have done better i'm just saying so. i agree all right couple just two more things so oh canada goes away of course we're getting a new version but uh what, what's his name who, martin short, martin short. short. adios or whatever this is <laughs> oh this is a big loss for my husband though oh, big uh, loss uh, big uh, loss uh. for my husband <laughs> he's so sad he loved that show so i love the scene with all the little dogs like the little hunting dogs that was one of my favorite scenes and where they ice skated on the canals yeah but now we have eugene levy uh and uh Catherine no O'Hara. i've never seen have, shit's creek or whatever it's called <laughs> oh, I'm just have you so you you've seen version you, You've seen um, uh, Home Alone, though. I think the mom in Home Alone is Catherine O'Hara. Okay. And then and the Beetlejuice too. Yes, and then have you seen American Pie, Mike? Mm, is that the one where the girl says, "I went to yeah. band camp"? Yes, I'm that's it. Band camp. Yes, yes. that. So the dad in that is Eugene Levy. So that's oh, well, that helps. Is he that was I saw that in two thousand two when I was working in Huntsville. I get it. So yeah, but anyway, they were like big in Canada. They um they had like it, I think it was CTTV or something. It was you know like oh, S like that S C T V. That's it. <laughs> Sorry, I yeah yeah I pay attention to Canada stuff. Um, so anyway, they were I think on that, and so I think that that's yeah part of why they're coming to this. So that makes me happy. I think it's going to be a really good addition. So people yeah. in live chat just trying to make me curse. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna happen. That's the name of the show, Mike. You said it. <laughs> no, no, I heard it. Said it was. <laughs> I, hear, I hear it's fantastic, by the way. I started watching that show um when it first came on and I couldn't get into it, but apparently, like every time I tell people that I get berated and people are like, No, you have to watch it. It's really good. So I need to get back on it. I think the last season's coming out soon. So I need to get all on it. Last thing, and I think we're all kind of glad this this happened, but I can't believe it happened in 2019, it happened toward the beginning of the year. The smoking areas went away in the theme parks. Does, Pam, does that not seem like it was like five years ago? I know, right? Uh, they've slowly been phasing them out. I think they've given everyone a little bit of time to adjust to it um, if they're smokers or not. And I think that it's, you know, a good move. I'm glad to see it happen. I know that lots of people are. I, I you know, I sympathize with those who do smoke, um, but it is what it is. I mean, I think that there are... are locations available but they're outside the park all right one last question before we get out of here today kind of moving making that transition from 2019 into 2020 the one thing you're most excited for in 2020 pam what do you think 
Um, I'm really looking forward to the Mickey's Runaway Railroad. I really am. I think that it has the potential to be really interesting. I think they've done some cool things at Hollywood Studios. It's really feeling more like a full day park again. And I think this will help with that as we keep moving forward. It's funny because again, they previewed that on the Christmas special on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. And Mallory was not excited about it. She goes, I, I'm not going to like that ride. I'm like, but you don't know. It's a new ride. Like it's a whole new kind of thing. But I think it just on TV, it kind of didn't show. I think it's one of those things that hopefully it gets buzz once people get on it. And I think that, I think it's hard to explain what it's going to be until. I think they did a bad job with the promo. If, if I'm, if I'm going to be honest, I think that it wasn't, it didn't translate well. And I don't think they did a good job sort of explaining what it is maybe. Um, and I think once we get people there and people on it, mm -hmm. then we'll have a better idea I of what it is. I agree. I think it's one of those things you got to get on it, have firsthand experience. Yeah. It and the social media will do that. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Ricky, 2020, biggest thing you look forward to. So, mine is also Mickey and Minnie's Railway Railway. Um, I think it's going to be a fantastic attraction, even though, yes, I'm sad it replaced the great movie ride. I know a lot of people were thinking again on that one, good riddance, but for me, I thought that it was such a Disney attraction, um, even though it had MGM, you know, properties in it. But, um, besides that fact, um, I am excited about the attraction overall. I think it's going to be a nice addition to the park. It's going to round out the park better. Um, I, you know, I would say Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, but having already been on it in France, uh, it's a little hard to be excited about something I've already ridden. So <laughs> I, it's really cool, though. I have to admit, it's a really cool attraction. It reminds me a lot of Spider-Man uh, at Universal. Um, it's similar in regard of how the whole thing works a little bit. Um, and it's a really cool attraction. It will be very cool to see what they were actually saying because they spoke in French and I don't speak French. So, uh, it'll be nice to know what they were talking about in English now. So, <laughs> but I got the gist of the attraction in French. So, yeah. And Ratatouille is the thing I'm looking forward to because France is going to become, you know, just redone with the new oh, yeah. the attraction. It's going to have the Beauty and the Beast sing along, which I like Beauty and the Beast. I mean, we're be our guest podcast. So we can uh, sing out some notes and uh, I think it'll be, and I'm glad they're not taking away impressions de France. So, mm -hmm. and we've got the new creperie coming as well, yes. um, which is going to be really delicious. And I think there's another counter service um, portion to that as well too. So that's going to be good. Um, yeah. France is going to be a whole new place yeah, next so. year. I mean, if you, if you've been on the Skyliner and you've flown over and seen what it looks like, it's just insane, you know um, what they've done in France. So yeah, it's going to be, Oh, also there will be bathrooms in France. I could tell that they were building bathrooms. So yay, we don't have to go so far to get the bathroom. That's good. <laughs> Ricky with all the updates. Everybody. I know, right? Yay, bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's go do it for today. We uh, appreciate you taking the time to download or stream the show. We'd love it when you're here with us. Uh, drop by the social media, especially Facebook, facebook.com. Just be our guest podcast. Let us know what's the thing you're going to miss most that went away in 2019. And what are you looking forward to most in 2020 we'll have some fun this weekend don't forget today's show brought to you by our friends over at the magic for less travel they are there for you 24 7 to make sure you have an amazing trip to your disney destination where they're headed to walt disney world disneyland sailing with the four ships and the disney cruise line soon to be more than that I can't oh my gosh i mean because we're in 2020 now like stuff's getting real like the wish is going to happen in 2022 i know and it's like two years away now it's yeah crazy. i know we're gonna start oh, learning more this year about the wish so. exactly and adventures by disney going everywhere you know and what like one of my uh if or friends machu picchu in 2020 can you believe awesome. it's fun so you can just do all kinds of stuff and the agents over at the magic for less will help you they're gonna help you plan they're gonna make sure everything is squared away so that you're set up for the best vacation ever get get that vacation at the lowest price possible they're there for you all the time so check them out today drop by the website great trip planning tools just to get started over at the magic for less Dot com. Also, please use our Amazon affiliate link, brguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. You get all your prime benefits, cost you nothing extra. And everything you do, uh, purchase over there, help support the show. So again, brguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. Give us a follow on social media. We're going to be lighting that up this next week for Marathon Weekend over at Be Our Guest Pod and at Be Our Guest Mike. And again, facebook.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. Don't forget lizards as you post pictures to social media over Marathon Weekend. Hashtag run B O G P so we can find those hashtag run B O G P. All right, time to get out of here. Let's get on through the weekend. Thank you so much for being part of the show. So for Pam and Ricky, I'm Mike wishing you a great weekend. Whatever you do, stay safe and we'll see you real soon. Yay.
<laughs> awesome. <laughs> the bathrooms. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about bathrooms. I can't even tell you. Like it's I mean, gonna they be awesome. the ones in America when they put those in. So. They did. Oh, the new bathrooms are open uh by the refreshment port too, which is fantastic. Oh, Starbucks is open. Yes, I'm so excited Temp about that. Starbucks. It, it was tough. It's gonna be temporary, but yeah. I I'm happy because um I missed my Starbucks when I was there when, not this past trip. So I only get it when I'm in, in Epcot, which is weird. Like I don't know why Epcot's the park where I'm like, you know what? Starbucks sounds really good right now. <laughs> Cool. Uh, sometimes I do Animal Kingdom, but I definitely don't do Magic Kingdom very often, and I don't do Hollywood Studios very, um, very often. So, anyway. all right. Well, I will. Weird thing about me. So we'll catch you guys Bye. Next. Uh, all right. Well, here's the deal, though. I need to do one extra show at some point. Ricky, like we could do a trip report for you. We could do a show about next Friday. We should do about Grand Casino or not Grand Casino. No, uh, you mean Riviera. Riviera? Yeah. So we'll we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll have to do it tonight. But yeah, I just need to get ahead because I'll be gone. All right. Okay. Just, just text for, us just one week though, because Monday I can do the shows. I'm leaving Tuesday. I'll be back the next Monday. So I just need to get those shows done for that next week. Okay. Okay. All right. Just I'll text talk us. To you. All right. All right. Bye. Harris has open air urinals. I didn't know. Uh, is it just called? Huh. Well, heck if it's anything like what I experienced in Paris where I accidentally put my coat in poop. Um, yeah, that makes uh, sense. We should have so. this call 30 seconds ago. On yes. that note. <laughs> yeah. to go to Taco Bell. Thank you. All right. I'll Bye. see you guys. Later. <laughs> yeah, bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.